This video contains disturbing and violent content. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> Synonymous to the titles in which they feature, we remember them for being unsettling in both context and physicality. They become a source of dread we can only hope to avoid or forget. These are the combatants that stand out for all the wrong reasons. The ones that end up buried deep within our psyche every time we return to the game. Keep your distance as we get up close and personal with Series 1 of the Top 35 Unsettling Enemies in Games. Big Pile of Puke, Earthbound Everyone knows that as you traverse your way through the world of Earthbound that you're likely to encounter some weird, odd, and often disturbing things. One of these enemies that fulfills all three of these criteria is the Big Pile of Puke, which is also known by the equally delightful title of Huge Barfy Slime in Japanese translations. Found in the swamps of the deep darkness, they are gelatinous mounds of slime with an eye-catching poop-brown hue to their heaping mass. The big pile of puke is said to be so stinky that a single whiff of it will make you and your party tear up. It could use a standard bash attack along with stinky gas and paralyzing mucus, and if you're particularly unfortunate, it may summon up an even smaller, slimier little pile to fight against you as well. The big pile of puke, however silly it may seem, is not an enemy to be trifled with, so make sure you stock up on herbs before the battle. Hemogoblin, Starbound. A play on the term hemoglobin, the protein in red blood cells that gives them their red color. Hemogoblins are a type of enemy found exclusively in the already disturbing flesh capes and flesh biomes. The hemogoblins look like a mutated human with somewhat animal-like limbs, covered in red, presumably fleshy skin, with only a small portion of human flesh exposed. They have small silver hooves as well as small bars on top of their bodies. While they may not initially seem too alarming, when attacked, the Hemogoblin will split into two, leaving two sides of its body, one with the exposed spine and tail, and the other with the head and torso to run around, still trying to attack your character. To add insult to injury, once the Hemogoblin's body is divided, the player has to kill the tail end with a non-hunting weapon to obtain the loot, with the reverse applicable to the torso part of the Hemogoblin. After you defeat one of the Hemogoblins, it might be best to sit down and reassess exactly what you're doing making your way through a biome made of flesh, fighting enemies that will attack you, irrespective of how many pieces they happen to be in. Ugly Mugs, Battletoads Arcade Coming off of the hype of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, Battletoads is the tale of a group of toads who have made their way through a series of platform levels in order to defeat the evil Dark Queen. As you make your way through the caves and sewers, sometimes the walls will come to life, with faces protruding from their surface. These are the Ugly Mugs, an enemy that springs out at opportune moments to catch the players unaware. Essentially, disembodied heads they have a severe underbite with skin stretched taut over their faces. Their eyes will pop from their sockets to attack you and will wave around wildly, attempting to hit you and cause as much damage as possible. It's best to simply attack them and move along when they materialize, but the sudden and spooky jump of a set of disembodied eyeballs coming to attack you is enough to set even the strongest of stomachs a little on edge. With ugly mugs, it's best to keep an eye out as best you can. Slugs, Splatterhouse Arcade. Very little is known about these terrible abominations brought about by the experiments of Dr. West, but what we can see and can speculate paints an ugly sight. The skin sack crawls along the path with clear facial features recognizable in the heap. As Rick approaches, however, the mass rears its head, pulling back the skin to reveal malformed teeth ready to take a bite. Once hit, the slug will collapse in a heap before disintegrating through the floor. Whilst easy to fight in combat, their ghastly image will make you take a step back. Whatever lost soul is trapped within would gladly have you free it from its curse. Nine. 
Nazi zombie fetus. South Park, the stick of truth. Within the unplanned parenthood clinic, something sinister lurks in the shadows. The Nazi zombie fetuses attack in small packs of two or four to overwhelm the enemy. You can hear the pitter-patter of tiny feet in the air ducts just before they attack with the ferocity of wild animals, easily taking out armed soldiers. Their strength is, to put it simply, incredible, and their resistance to gross or poisoning means you can't whittle their health down between turns. Although intentionally humorous, the Nazi zombie fetus still manages to leave an uneasy impression on the player. Their brain hemorrhage and projectile vomit attacks, mixed with the swearing in German whenever encountered, and Nazi insignia provide for a pretty morbid creature. On top of that, the killing of enemies resembling not only babies, but fetuses, doesn't usually garner joyful celebration, even at the best of times. Either way, once you return to South Park to continue your quest, there will certainly be a bad feeling in your stomach. Order and Waster, Dante's Inferno. Hell is full of monstrous creations, each reflecting the inner torment of those from which they were born. But a particularly vivid representation of the circle of greed is the hoarder and waster, both guilty of the dual crimes of selfishly hoarding and wasting precious things in their lives. The souls of these damned refuse together to personify both sides of the same sin. The hoarder half keeps withdrawn, protective of the golden pile within its paunch, but will attack Dante should he come too close. The waster half wields a mighty golden mace, forged from the very coin it discarded so carelessly in life. Despite being of two bodies, their physical form is shriveled and malnourished, which represents their lust for material over their own bodies. Despite this, they can overwhelm Dante by working together to create a whirlwind with the mace, able to knock him down and damage their opponent severely. However, such a move ends up being them biting off more than they can chew, and will result in an opening to bring about their demise. They can be undone by the very sin that slew them in life, and the one that they live by even in death. Puppet, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess In the Legend of Zelda universe, everyone knows that Skull Kid is already one of the most disturbing characters out there. So when, in Twilight Princess, you begin to encounter his minions, it comes as a given that they will also be fairly unsettling. However, not many people expected something quite as creepy as the puppets. Puppets are twisted wooden marionettes with heads that loll to the side, and arms controlled by invisible strings. They have toothy smiles on their faces and blank red eyes that seem to stare into the souls of both Link and the player themselves. Their tattered clothes hang down in rags, and their gangly limbs are contorted at unnerving angles. To make matters worse, your first encounter with them is when Link is in wolf form making it even more harrowing to face them with your lowered defenses. Skull Kid uses the puppets to protect his sacred grove, and during your fight with him, you must face wave after wave of these demonic dolls, making for quite a harrowing experience. Bruises, Doom 3, Resurrection of Evil. Standing at about 9 feet tall, the Bruiser is probably one of the scariest enemies in the Doom series. This is honestly a huge achievement because, well, it's Doom. This demon-machine hybrid is a deadly combination. It resembles a Hell Knight in appearance and in terms of muscle mass, while on its mechanical side it resembles a Mancubus. One of the most disturbing aspects about this enemy is its face. Instead of a mouth, a television monitor hangs from its jaws, flashing a close-up of an actual mouth seemingly twisted into a sick smile. No matter how much you fight this beast off, it never seems to go away. So before you hop into that next playthrough, keep in mind that one of these beasts may be just around the corner.
Carrion Carcass, Time Splitters, Future Perfect. The level Mansions of Madness already has you battling all kinds of supernatural fiends with more than enough scary imagery to last you a long time after you finish the game. However, even after defeating the boss and being moments away from the stage's end, you enter the kitchens only to behold a truly disturbing enemy, the Carrion Carcass. As the name implies, it is the corpse of an animal, a cow to be exact. Carrion Carcasses rise to their feet without warning and flail in your direction, whacking you with whatever limbs they can make use of. Their stiff yet desperate movements leave you to wonder if the mind of the bovine still remains, desperate to escape the fate they clearly cannot tell has already befallen them due to the fact that they are without a head. But despite their stomachs being splayed open and skin separated from the flesh, this doesn't appear to have slowed them down. Until you blast them with a shotgun or hit them with a bat, one thing is for sure, you'll never look at beef the same way again. Flesh Atronach, The Elder Scrolls Online These monolithic flesh monstrosities were originally created by a Dunmer sorcerer after incorporating the flesh element into her magic. They were made for the sole purpose of being gatekeepers to Sheogorath's realm. They prevent those from the Shivering Isle's entry into Tamriel's equivalent of hell, unless they carry the sacred word from the god of madness himself. Under most circumstances, flesh Atronachs are constructed from human bone and tissue, they're held together by runes inscribed over the body and the chain clasp around their neck. Some are formed with weapons built into their flesh, while the other more common and smaller ones are recognizable by the gems poking through the seams. On your journey, you can actually create one of these abominations using the discarded flesh from torture victims, and send forth your own Atronach to open sealed doors and passages, fend off hordes of enemies, and save your own companions. You better pray to the divines you don't encounter these hideous abominations on your own. Like Like, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. A staple monster in the Zelda series, Like Likes are undulating masses that shamble around dungeons in search of a feast. Their astonishingly slow movements and languishing drudge haunt the tight rooms and corridors, making this otherwise harmless enemy a nightmare to deal with. Their gaping maws lunge at Link, swallowing him whole and sapping his health. Eventually, it will spit him out again, only to find that it has devoured an item or tunic, which, especially if you are traversing the Fire Temple, you will need to finish the dungeon. You have a chance to reclaim it, as it withdraws to digest its meal. But should it begin chasing you, that means your item is gone forever. The fact that a single creature can strip you of all your defenses make the like like an unsettling foe to encounter. Undead Aberration, Dark Souls 2. Thought to be an aborted or perhaps entirely failed attempt by Lord Aldia to revive the dragons in the world of Dark Souls, undead aberrations are disturbingly mutilated hulking masses that can be found trudging their way through pools of water in Sinner's Rise. They're flesh-colored hollows with bodies that are mutated beyond belief, with disfigured faces and spiky bones that emerge from the skin of what is presumably their backs. They're enormous and, unsurprisingly, quite difficult to beat leaving the player to attempt to find a way to avoid their heavy and deadly attacks, and their strong arms can prove to be rather difficult to avoid. The undead aberrations seem to lurk about in pain, however, and their faces are contorted in a way that makes it look as though they are ready to face death as soon as possible. The very least you could do for these misguided experiments is to grant their presumed wish and put them out of their misery. That is, if you're up to the task. Spore S, Resident Evil 6. During Ada Wong's infiltration of the aircraft carrier, she encounters her doppelganger, Carla Radames, who has injected herself with the C-Virus. Upon mutating into a formless, pustle-like mass, she spreads outward in an attempt to kill Ada as she flees. While her goo has ever grown most of your path, creating other traps and obstacles on their own right, the most frightening of Carla's abilities is to summon slimy forms of herself called S-types 
that slowly pursue Ada as she attempts to navigate the tight corridors and clear a path to safety. Fighting them is almost as pointless as they are not very strong and can survive losing much of their form. But they also burst with acid when they get hit that can damage the player. They cannot even be properly beaten as what remains of them are simply absorbed back into Carla's body to only be dispatched once again to take you down, especially once you've reached her L-type form. Your best bet is to run as fast as you can from what you simply cannot defeat. Breeder God Mode The Breeder is a giant mound of flesh with three heads atop its disfigured and melted form. Several tubes jut out of its spine spitting out green sacks around the arena that spawn any number of enemy combatants. Getting too close is also an unwise move as their left arms are equipped with a retractable claw that can be launched at the player at any given moment. Although slow and lumbering, these monsters can mean a difference between victory and defeat. If you are facing a never-ending onslaught that cannot be stemmed, keep an eye out for one of these beasts stalking the battlefield. You do not want to lose everything because of one enemy too many. Mutilated Humans, Prey Tommy's introduction through the bloody processing center of the sphere is disturbing enough in its own right. The sound of blood spattering, organs churning, and flesh tearing in a meat grinder would make anyone squeamish. Little did he know that this was not the end of the line for the victims. At their most basic, the mutilated humans are shambling sordid creatures with simple minds and only two functions. Work tirelessly for their masters and attack anyone who gets in their way. A breathing apparatus is linked to their brains through the eye sockets and connects throughout the body via mechanical spine down the front. They will pay no heed to you, making them passive hostiles, but anyone with half a conscience would attempt to put these wretches out of their misery. In combat, they are obviously very easy to defeat, and their limbs are easily blasted off, but most will continue to attempt an attack even if they have been decapitated. These pitiful souls are only made more tragic and unsettling by the fact that several humans have survived the process with their humanity intact, meaning that a shred of their former selves probably lives deep within, as much a slave to their alien overlords as they are to themselves. Snatcher, Gears of War 4 In war, a soldier's greatest fear is the loss of their humanity, and the Snatcher is the embodiment of that fear. A sickening combination of insect, arachnid, and alien. They have a huge, pointed spider limbs, a hard exterior shell. When facing human forces, the Snatcher will fire a toxic barb from their tail that stuns their target. From here, they encase the human in their stomach before scuttling to their pod nest where they can gestate and transform them into a juvie. Should the player be captured by one, they will have to rely on their fellow allies to release them by shooting the unarmored bulb on the underside of their bodies. Should your teammates be unsuccessful in saving your life, then what monstrous mutation that leaves this arachnid's pod will not resemble the human you once were. The best thing to do when approached by the swarm and these fearsome creatures is to keep your friends close. So, if you happen to be snatched, they'll know exactly where to find you and free you from a terrible fate. Triggerman, the suffering, ties that bind. Of the many manifestations of crime Torque has conjured within his subconscious, the Triggerman is perhaps one of the most twisted creatures that haunts the streets of Baltimore. It appears to be a giant spider upon first glance, with a giant torso fused to the front, riddled with gunshot wounds. Should you dare to get closer, you'll discover its three front legs have shotguns attached to their ends and pack a very powerful punch. 
It's best to find cover, even at long range, since the two arms on the humanoid portion do wield Uzis that serve to quickly drain the health of anyone foolish enough to cross paths with it. Most of your time battling this insanity will be spent in search of a place to hide from the gunfire, but watching this thing barrel through whatever cover you find leaves you feeling very exposed and quite simply powerless, just like anyone else who met their fate at the business end of a barrel. Cannibal, Mass Effect 3. Cannibals are disturbing enough as a concept, but once encountered, they are nightmarish to say the least. Combining humans and Batarians with Reaper technology led to these creatures, who swarm the battlefield like flies. Their physiology is monstrous, with a clear divide between the human half, acting as a biomechanical gun arm, and the Batarian body that provides strength and endurance. Their eyes shine with burning energy, and they're intimidating as well as relentless. But what makes them truly unsettling is the methods they employ to overwhelm the enemy. As they make their assault, tearing down opposition as they go, they consume corpses by spewing resin from their mouths and visibly draining what sustenance they can find. This disgusting act heals them, even causing armor plating to grow over their bodies. Although it is possible to interrupt this process, the most effective method of preventing their recovery is by incinerating or destroying all deceased you find. Unnerving is the thought that both sides may clash, but should the cannibals win, the battlefield would be wiped clean with no sign of the fallen. Agile, Resident Evil 5. Feral dogs mutated by the Type 2 Plagueis Parasite, packs of them now roam Africa with a thirst for flesh. Their most haunting attribute is the way their faces split down the middle, all the way down the neck, displaying squirming tentacles and sharp fangs dripping with black saliva. Chris and Sheva often encounter them in tight corridors, which, when combined with their quick movements and savage attacks, makes them lethal if you aren't quick enough to dispatch them. What makes them even more disturbing is when they leap onto the characters and bring their gaping maws so close to your face that you can smell their horrific, ungodly poo close is something everyone desperately wants to avoid. Goliaths. Borderlands 2. First encountered in Frostburn Canyon, Goliaths are arguably one of the most disturbing types of bandits that you can encounter in the Borderlands, mostly attributed to their bizarre biology. Initially appearing as a huge, muscular man, Goliaths are built like tanks and appear in a number of forms, including loot midget Goliaths, caustic Goliaths, and badass Goliaths. As they lumber towards the Vault Hunters, Goliath speaks in a series of short sentences, seemingly incredibly stupid, their faces covered by welding masks. When engaged in combat, they are alarmingly strong, but if you happen to shoot off their masks while they lumber towards you, you will witness a rather disturbing sight. The heads of Goliaths are malformed, nearly inverted into their bodies, and if you shoot them enough, their skulls and spine will ascend from their bodies and wave around aimlessly. They also become stronger as they kill more, making them even harder to destroy as your time fighting them goes on. The best course of action with Goliaths? To drop them as soon as possible, saving both your health as well as your sanity. Bottom, Silent Hill 4, The Room. Found in South Ashfield Heights Apartments, The Bottom is a horrific mass of flesh supported by two large arms and a head protruding from its underside. Likely a reference to Walter Sullivan's birth inside the complex and his intense rage at his family, this ghastly image roams the tight corridors with a gravelly roar announcing its presence. From afar, 
They will point at Henry and utter the word, Receiver, foretelling the part the protagonist will play in the events to come. Although similar in appearance to the twin victim, the bottom is far more formidable and can clear spaces very quickly as well as deal more damage. Disturbing in origin and appearance, you'll spend much more of your time staying as far back from these frightening beasts as you can. You definitely do not want to end up in their deadly grasp. Infested Corpse, Dark Souls 3. When going through Purgatory, you're almost guaranteed to encounter a multitude of dead people. However, Purgatory is also not the kind of place where you should begin to get comfortable, nor is it the kind of place where things are predictable. While infested corpses appear to be identical to reanimated corpses at first sight, when you get close enough, you're in for a nasty surprise. As the corpse rises from the ground, it becomes apparent that they are not what you expected. The cadaver will ascend, the chest cavity opens, and a squirming humanoid mass of maggots will spill from the rib cage, giving you mere moments to recoil and attack. While they are slow, if the maggots touch you, they will begin to bleed you dry, steadily draining you of life. The most effective form of attack against infested corpses is fire, and even using a torch may buy you precious seconds when you fight them. If you want to do your best to avoid these monstrosities, Listen out for a retching sound they make before transforming. Although subtle, it may well be the one thing between life and being sucked dry by a squirming pile of maggots. Boomer, Left for Dead. With Left 4 Dead already being a tense and fast-paced zombie horde experience, teamwork and organization are critical to surviving until the very end. As long as those factors remain strong, nothing can stop the survivors from reaching their destination. Except, of course, the Boomer. Bloated by vast quantities of acidic mucus within bulging pus sacs on their bodies and abnormally large guts, the Boomer's role is to disrupt teamwork and impair your ability to fight the horde. The gobs of vomit it spits at its victims causes temporary blindness, which not only leaves a player open to zombie attacks, but draws infected to that person. Add to this their tendency to explode once defeated, causing damage and staggering to anyone in close proximity, and you have an enemy that's not only disturbing in sight, but can disrupt the flow of your teamwork, even bringing about the demise of an entire team. So beware when you hear gurgles and slobbering in the distance, because you may just have a boomer on your hands. Remnant, Fear 2, Project Origin. It's enough that all manner of paranormal and superhuman forces stand in Beckett's path to end the horror of Alma Wade, but the Remnant always comes back to haunt you, and then some. They're possessed humans that will react to the player's approach with a disorienting scream, fleeing from sight. They seek out the bodies of fallen soldiers and take control of their remains. Each reanimated corpse is linked to the Remnant via red strands that Beckett can use to trace their source. While they may not use weapons of any kind aside from their terrible scream, their puppets will seek out and use firearms against the player. Due to the constant reviving of enemy combatants and the Remnant's high health threshold, an encounter with one of these hostiles will result in major loss of ammunition, so you'd better be prepared. You absolutely do not want to be caught in the heat of an unending battle. Cherub, Doom 3. The cherub already resembles a baby that has become fused with the fly, which makes it disturbing from the onset, but once you notice the little details, it takes on a whole new level of creepy. You'll hear these little monsters coming from the vibrations of their wings fluttering just around the corner, and the distorted childish noises they omit don't serve to soothe the nerves either. Given their physical appearance, the sharp claws, deathly black eyes with white slits, and glistening black wings, their behavior of attacking in a swarm is unsurprising. Their strength when dealing damage is quite surprising, however, and forces you to put an end to the cherub's short lives. Since they are mostly encountered in the vicinity of a mancubus, it is theorized that they are possibly the ones who birthed the cherub in such large numbers. Whatever their origins, the task of cutting short the life of a child, evil or otherwise, is never an easy task for a gamer.
colossal ruin. Alice, Madness Returns. Combining both elements of hulking industrial machinery and quietly disturbing parts of plastic dolls, the colossal ruin in Alice Madness Returns is a daunting enemy at the best of times. The sheer power of its deadly attacks makes it all the more terrifying, and its first appearance as Alice obtains a teapot cannon is both well-timed and quite an alarming scare. It will attack Alice with its disembodied doll arms trying to grab her, and if this does not succeed, will use a number of ranged attacks including spewing flaming doll heads from its body or sending out a single larger head that essentially acts as a bomb. Once Alice has reduced the Colossal Ruin's health enough, it will transform revealing a huge doll head and three pipes at the tops of the body. It will become more violent, beginning to use a flamethrower attack where fire spews from the newest doll head. It will take all of your skill to dodge and attack the ruin to the point where it will topple, leaving Alice to continue her fight against the doll maker's creations and the world inside her mind. Standard Zombies, Half-Life 2 The iconic Half-Life enemy, the Standard Zombie, is a slow yet menacing presence throughout the series, whenever it's encountered. Humans who have fallen victim to head crab attacks are transformed into these vile creatures with elongated bony fingers for shredding its victims and splayed chest that acts as a secondary mouth, ready and waiting to grab and consume anything that happens to get too close. These corpse-like beings usually appear in small groups that stalk their prey to make them one of the pack. And yet, despite their mutilated appearance, they are still quite human beneath the surface, even somewhat pitiful. Possibly the most disturbing aspect of the zombie is the wails and cries that can be heard beneath the head crab that, once it has been removed, are revealed to be the cries of the host from a frozen screen, trapped in an unending nightmare that they cannot escape. Blow up Tommy's Condemned 2. The player will find many a remnant of the Tommy dolls around the Walker factory still packaged and in mint condition. But, as you guide Ethan deeper into the wreck, the new and improved blow-up Tommies are released upon you. After a few glimpses from the shadows as the investigation unfolds, these malformed toddlers attack in great numbers, getting as close as they can to their intended victims before detonating into a shower of plastic and gears. They hobble towards you using their disfigured limbs, the creepy sounds of their robotic childlike voices emanating from within, and then they pull the cord that triggers their demise and possibly your own. Flee too far and they will pursue you on all fours, rolling at high speeds, and will not stop until you are close enough to see their smashed, rotting faces, blood-stained porcelain, sharp nails, and jagged stitching jutting out from all over their bodies. Perhaps just as disturbing as they are as antagonists is the fact that you can use them as weapons by pulling their string and throwing them as grenades. When blocking, the doll will animate and cover its face, and look behind it, as if to say it does not want to fight. Other times they will become completely inanimate and won't even move. They are certainly not more adorable up close. Spider Shiabito, Siren Blood Curse. Needless to say, the Siren series is synonymous with violent and horrific imagery, especially in the design of its main enemy, the Shiabito. In Blood Curse, the spider form really drives the point home. 
They hang from the walls and the ceiling, waiting for their prey to walk into their trap. From there, they are able to dart towards you easily and leap upon you, pinning you to the ground. You will easily be able to get a good look at them, flesh rotting and torn, torso and head twisted around and the empty eye socket still staring at you. Their warped bodies and gangly limbs allow for increased strength and stamina, so escape will be next to impossible. They stalk after you, calling out intimidatingly as they trace your path. Once they drop down to the ground in front of you, you will better be able to fight or flee for your life because you won't get a second chance. Remember to always keep a keen eye on your surroundings or you'll surely wind up the fly caught in their webs. Crawlers, Dead Space 2. The very first encounter with the Crawlers, Isaac has in the elementary school, sums up the unsettling danger they pose. Quick and swift, they're certainly not hostiles you want latching onto you. Babies, possessed by the necromorph entity, have swelled up beyond their natural size due to the explosive resin that has developed under their skin. While it doesn't take much to kill them, and even though they can prove to be useful in taking down swarms of enemies by detonating them prematurely, they can sneak up on you from the sprawl's vast ventilation system and overwhelm any area in large enough numbers. They can be very off-putting, signaling their presence with the warped cries of babies in pain. Crawlers actually retain the way they tumble over each other as they crawl, the cries and laughs of their original hosts. It becomes difficult to ignore this when you see the ID tags around their wrists, meaning most, if not all, the newborns on the sprawl had barely attained life before having it mercilessly wretched away in the most inhuman way possible. The Flood, Halo, Combat Evolved the greatest enemy to all life in the known universe. The Flood are parasitic creatures that consume and multiply all organic life unlucky enough to be caught in their path. Once released from their containment facility on Halo during their debut, the unique design and merciless slaughter of human and covenant forces left an impression that gamers still feel today. In Combat Evolved, the three main forms of flood present are infections, small squid-like creatures that attack in large numbers and overwhelm allies and transform them, carriers, large bulbous masses that burst open to unleash more infections upon the battlefield, and combat flood, the main ground forces that are dangerous enough on their own but can cut down entire armies once they adapt enough to carry the weaponry of the races they assimilate. All three attack in large swarms whenever they are encountered, and relentlessly barrage everything in sight until it is dead. Their horrible mutations of fellow UNSC personnel and Covenant alike create some pretty disturbing imagery. Also. The fact that even the advanced Forerunners only planned to deal with the Forerunners was to kill all life in the galaxy and starve the flood of host bodies doesn't even involve any confidence in your ability to defeat them. Their appearance in the original Halo Combat Evolved is easily their most memorable, so give it a revisit when you get the chance. You'll only live to regret it. Centaur, Fallout 3. With the sheer volume of awful experiments that were carried out with the forced evolutionary virus in Fallout, 
it comes as no surprise that there would be some things that simply could no longer be contained within the laboratories. As you travel along the east coast, you run the risk of encountering super mutants, who often come in tow with a monstrous creation known as the Centaur. A disfigured human and animal splicing project gone wrong, they are completely subservient to their super mutant masters, and they have little to no intelligence. Centaurs are an amalgamation of various creatures, with a human head and torso, but a body compiled of a variety of animal parts and human arms they use to drag themselves across the ground. Their mouths house long tentacles and, if you get too close, they will spew out radioactive vomit that will cause you an alarming amount of radiation damage. As the centaurs scuttle towards you, eerily human but also jarringly alien, it's difficult to reconcile the horrific results of the Great War with reality. Screamer, Dying Light the Haran virus mercilessly tore through everyone in its wake, including the children that resided in the city of the same name. Should you hear a child crying as you scavenge the ruined streets and buildings, that sound is a screamer luring you into its trap. Once within range, the screamer will unleash an ear-piercing shriek that deafens Crane into a stupor, leaving you vulnerable to attack. Virals will be drawn to the sound, so you better leave before they find you. If you can, avoid the encounter altogether, or else approach whilst camouflaged and put an end to the child's suffering the only way you can. Many believe the screamers are simply trap infected. However, there's evidence to show that they retain more than their former selves than the other enemies in the game. All screamers are presumed to be found in their homes or places they were when they died. One is even found crying over the bodies of two other deceased kids. Another can be seen in a house laughing at cartoons on TV. Perhaps their cries of fears are in fact cries of pain and you're the only one who can help silence them. Suicider, Dead Island. When you hear a voice crying out for help on the now zombie-infested island of Benoi, it's in the interest of most players to approach it and check it out, in hopes of finding another human to help with the efforts of the survivor and to save the life of a fellow uninfected being. However, it would be prudent to remember that things aren't always what they seem in this wrecked tropical paradise. As you progress through the Black Hawk Down mission, you will hear what sounds like a desperate person calling for help from the bushes on the beach. Look closer, however, and you will instead encounter a whole and grotesque form of the Suicider. The Suicider is a special form of infected, where the human host has had their entire body nearly encapsulated by the pulsating pustules that writhe and move on their own accord. There is hardly anything left of the individual who once controlled the body of the Suicider, and as it approaches, it becomes apparent that the blisters are not just for show. If it gets close enough, the abscesses on the body will swell up and explode, leaving the player covered in nauseous gases that will knock them to the ground and blind them. The best approach to the Suicider is to attack immediately and not get too close, because if you do, it's lights out for good. Pig Avenger, Painkiller, Overdose Pig Avengers are the souls of mortals trapped in purgatory that suffered an incredibly awful fate. Their dismembered limbs have been stitched haphazardly onto an animal carcass. Their heads are upside down and wired to a metal frame with hooks to slash at its victims. Fittingly, you'll encounter these enemies on the level animal farm, where the livestock once sliced up for meat has been replaced with human flesh. Although they move in erratic patterns, they are not to be underestimated, as they can eject bloody chicken corpses at the player to do considerable damage upon impact. In the cloistered area of the farm, fighting the Pig Avenger becomes not just a matter of survival, but of maintaining your already fragile sanity. It's a constant struggle throughout this twisted world, filled with some of the most horrific imagery and monsters that you will ever witness in a video game. 